Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Shared Dream by Odam Publishing. It's a cooperative game for two to four players that also includes a single player variant. In the game The Shared Dream, you're basically going to be playing as one of several different characters. These characters all have two unique forms. They have an avatar, which they kind of have this dream state going on, and then they have their real life character. In the game, you're going to also select a scenario, and in the base game itself, it has tons of different scenarios to choose from, along with their all going to have their own personal reflections, which means they'll have their own unique story inside the bigger realm of the scenario. So maybe you're going to need to set up trip wires or set up uh, beacons while also a killer clown is roaming around the streets, or you're going to uh, be going ahead and solving different clues and mysteries as something else lurking in the darkness is trying to stop you guys. Now, obviously, you have the two different things I was talking about, the avatar as well as the main character, but you'll be able to transform into your avatar character and utilize special abilities, but when you do that it comes at great cost to you and more and more monsters from the shadow realms the dark dream realms are going to spawn throughout the game trying to accomplish your own missions making the game easier in the scenario while then trying to also complete the scenario if you can do so before a bad event happens or a timer ends or you guys all die you'll win the game and if not you're going to lose in this we're going to give a brief summary of how the game is played show you all the content and then talk about all the different expansions that come in the game and what you're going to get from these guys i know there's going to be a second edition or something like that coming out and I wanted to show you guys what this all looked like beforehand so you get a good idea of what it's going to look like and how it's going to feel and how it's going to play previous to checking it out on the new Kickstarter campaign. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and show you what it comes with and uh, talk a little bit about the game. So here we have everything that the shared dream has to offer as well as all the expansions which we'll be talking about above. But to talk about just the base game, which is everything here except for this guy here, who is X or X Attack, which I'll talk about later, is a bunch of stuff. And I'm gonna go through all of it with you so you get an idea of how the game functions. So these cards over here and these ones over here are your reflection cards. And every single player is going to get their own unique reflection cards in which you're going to start somewhere and then progress throughout the game on these tiles, moving around completing these tasks. Not only that though, but you're also going to get these scenario cards, scenario board um, anything else that it tells you to get and you're going to do whatever that says can have a setup for you some of them are going to have unique characters that you're going to add like for instance this uh, dead serious has a killer clown there's some other ones as well and uh, you're going to uh, basically set it up so that the scenario does certain things throughout the game while you're also trying to complete this task but the ultimate goal is to complete the scenario in the in this dead serious one uh, you are basically trying to uh, vanquish the killer clown I mean he's almost impossible to get rid of until the very end of the game uh, so that is uh, one of many, many scenarios and many of the different reflection cards, which you can basically be able to choose from the beginning of the game randomly. And there's at least four of them, so you're never really, you're going to have a lot of games where you might not even actually go through the same reflection more than once. Uh, let's talk about the characters over here. There's a ton of characters in the game, and they're all back here. These are, of course, the um, special characters, or basically your animus. Uh, the, like these guys over here and then above here are your main characters which are these things here which are actually not uh, not miniatures they're uh, basically little standees and that's why you can tell them apart pretty easily uh, you're going to get to choose one of the guys so one of these guys here you're going to pick whatever you want and they're going to have conviction and nightmare and doubt now conviction is basically your currency that you can go ahead and spend throughout the game that'll let you turn into your animus and then you're going to have nightmare which is going to basically spawn monsters throughout the game depending on uh, how likely it is it's going to depend on how uh, how how many of the different nightmare tokens are on this track here once it gets to the to the top here it's very likely it's going to spawn a very very scary monster when you die you're going to have to put a doubt token on this space here if you die twice you're going to be out of the game and these are your stats combat magic social and movement you're also going to have uh, these two stats here which is your range and your uh, hp and that's how you're going to be dying throughout the game you'll have a bunch of tokens as well over here are Reavers, and which is interesting because these are our main bad guys. I think they're like shades or shadows, and these are the things that are going to spawn. However, when you get unlucky with your nightmare and it progresses too far, it's likely that a Reaver is going to spawn. You're going to draw one of these cards and see what it is, like this here, Tormented Reaver. You're going to take one of the miniatures here, which are looking like these guys, and there's three different types, and some of them are magical Reavers, and they'll be using dark magic attacks. Other ones are just simply going to use whatever the card says, and they're going to be following around the board and trying to destroy you. So you 
have to be careful with that and how you spawn uh, these guys is going to matter. You're going to have these, which are taint, and taint is basically going to spread across the map here. As you can see, there's a map down below here. And uh, as they, as they, as the taint, taint spreads, these guys are going to get bigger, better, and scarier, and possibly even turn into reavers if you're not careful. There's additional tubes here, which you use for extra health and whatnot. Then you're going to have a bunch of scenario stuff, whether it be the conviction and nightmare, uh, specifically to certain scenarios, and then of course health and whatnot. There's additional tiles as well, and there's animus cards as well too. So these are for each of the animuses there's three of them and depending on the character you choose is the abilities that you can use but you can only use them during animus form when you turn into an animus on your turn it will you'll turn back into your regular form afterwards so you need to decide when you want to do that and these stars here will indicate the rank of your animus so if you wanted to go rank three you'd spend three of these convictions whenever you spend conviction they also turn into nightmare you'd literally flip them over and it'll turn into nightmare which is going to be more likely to spawn the baddies and when you spawn baddies you're going to remove all the nightmare but you're also going to be able to utilize when you spend conviction these specific abilities and each one is better than the last as well as the fact that each of these combat scores is going to be higher than your base character which is really important to note so you get to be decide when is best to use those okay like i said before these are all the different scenario cards the killer clown one is right here which basically shows you how the clown is going to interact and you're going to be drawing them periodically and uh doing something with the clown you have echoes which you're basically going to draw it has a little story and something randomly is going to happen on your turn like maybe minus a movement or plus two magic maybe you're gonna get additional attack uh, that kind of stuff. So it's useful, but it only is good for one round and afterwards it goes away. It's kind of like you had a nightmare and that nightmare affected you in some way, or you had a dream, which was good and it gave you some kind of benefit. Artifacts are things that stay in play. I think you can have two of them and they do certain things that are good for you. Maybe they help you move around the board. Maybe they give you more powers, fighting, whatnot, that good stuff. You've got your character reference cards, which explains how it works. You can look at it here and it'll tell you uh, the return echo Conviction and Nightmare, the Decide and Action Order, and then Actions. And then it tells you the Night Phase, which is, of course, your enemies will act. You'll raise the Taint on the board. Uh, the Nightmare Test is going to you're gonna see if you uh, spawn anything. And then the Night Phase Actions. So it's a good way to have a good reference to see how the game works. Um, and that is pretty much what you're going to be getting. There's additional stuff, like I said, there's extra characters, and with them come character boards, like this killer clown board here, and it has this little terror meter, and as you deplete it, it's going to make the clown do different things. He'll end up enraging, and it gets scarier and stronger as the game goes on. But that's just one specific scenario. You have, I think you have up to like, I don't even know, one, two, three, four, five different scenarios just in the base game alone. War of the Roses, Explosive Nightlife, Beast at the Door, Dead Serious, and Attack of the mind reader and they are all pretty nasty you're gonna have different cards too with different phases in, in the game depending on the scenario so yeah there's just a whole bunch of good stuff and this is just the base game of the shared dream it also comes with a brilliant rule book with uh, really nice artwork and it explains everything in the game and how the setup works it's uh, very very detailed as far as that goes but that is pretty much the content you'll get for the game the shared dream uh, so let's go ahead and come up and talk about the different expansion material and what a good, a, good, a good description of what is going to be in them and how they're going to kind of function. So let's talk about the Shared Dream expansions, and there's four of them, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into them. I'll explain kind of what they are all about, so you have an idea about them. The first one here is the Necromancer expansion, or the Necrophobia expansion, and in it, you're gonna get the Necromancer, there's gonna be zombies, you're gonna get additional, com you're gonna get companions, a new type of unit. Uh, you're also going to get different locations and all that other good stuff. So it's basically more additional stuff for the game that you can go ahead and play with, and some additional new uh, interesting aspects added to it. This one here is called Night Terrors Expansion, and you're going to be getting Moon Beasts, as well as a Blood Drinker, and a new type of Reaver, a Malefic. Uh, Malefic is basically a a scarier shadow. It's two shadows get together, you roll the die, possibly turns into Malefic, and that Malefic will actually eat shadows and increase its... Uh, combat power and whatnot whenever it does that. The moon beast scenario in this is going to be where they're trying to stop the blood drinker. The blood drinker is basically another nemesis, kind of like the killer clown character, in which case you're basically going to be uh, trying to stop him from feeding on its prey. You're going to turn into the moon beast and interact with the uh, blood drinker to try and stop him from just 
doing evil things, right? And there's also two new characters in this, so you can choose to play with these new characters in the specific expansion or in the base game as well. Most of the stuff can be used in the base game, but it'll have their own specific scenarios and whatnot. Uh, the Crux Collection expansion is actually something unique and interesting. That is going to give you 10 new solo mode campaigns that all focus on an individual character in which you're going to basically be playing the game solo mode. Uh, it has a bunch of extra stuff in it and it has additional rules to explain the game better as far as utilizing all these components. Comes with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of new tokens, a bunch of tiles to use for the game, and of course personal reflections to increase, to basically uh, allow you to play all the different 10 new uh, scenarios or reflections. The last one here is called Wrath of Axitath, and this is actually from their RPG Laruna, and they also have Laruna Age of Kingdoms, which is a game, but this involves Axitath, and you're basically going to be getting the big Axitath miniature, who's very big in comparison to, uh, let's see, let's take a character here, right? Pretty decent size, as you can see. Uh, but you're going to be getting him, along with, of course, the scenario to fight against him. You're going to be getting new tiles, uh, a bunch of new rules, the character boards and everything you're going to need, along with a bunch of standees, and, of course, new personal reflections to play this specific scenario. You have to def basically you have to defeat him in his own realm. In order to do so, you're going to have to do certain things. But it basically adds a new style of the game, gives you more story, and it gives you a new big baddie to fight. Probably the most biggest and baddest of the bunch to deal with. But overall, those are the four different expansions for the game. The Shared Dream, quite a lot of stuff. Just in the base game alone, there's a bunch. But with all this additional stuff, you're probably never going to run out of content uh, before you just are like you know, move on to the next next thing you want to purchase, you know, Cult of the New and all that. But you're going to get a game with a lot of stuff with all this expanded content. We've gotten to play quite a bit of it, um, but we still haven't even touched the surface based on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down, and I'll show you basically how a turn is going to play out. I'm not going to do a full, full walkthrough because there's a lot to this, but I'll give you an idea how it functions. There's a ton of walkthroughs on YouTube, though, if you're really interested in that, and I've seen a couple great ones, so we'll just kind of give you a, an overview of that. All right, so let's go down. All right, so remember when I said I wasn't gonna give you a walkthrough? Well, I kind of lied. I'm gonna pretty much explain how a turn works and give you a good idea of how it all functions, just because why not, right? I'm pretty sure you wanna hear about it anyway. So I went ahead and picked a scenario, I picked Dead Serious, because we talked about that one the most, the killer clown. This is going to be uh, the terror meters here. You're gonna have all the stuff. It'll tell you basically where you're going to wanna put everything. I'll just put this guy here. Um, and you'll be using these white ones for scenarios, as well as extra health, and then these are the taint. And it basically will tell you what you need to know, what you need to do as well as picking your character. I've gone ahead and got here my Animus character and my Standee for my main character for in, in the real life area. These are your Animus cards for your character, which you'll be able to use in Animus form. Uh, the Killer Clown miniature setup, as well as I went ahead and got one of the four personal reflections and uh, picked it at random. This one here is called Child's Play, and uh, he is ready to go for his character. I've gone ahead and set up all this extra stuff here. I think you'll be starting with some Conviction and Nightmare. I think it's either, I think it's two and two, or it's nothing. Maybe it's nothing. Yeah, I don't think it's anything actually. Um, yeah, but you, you will be gaining it throughout the game. Uh, I've went ahead and set up the three different uh, clown cards. You have the final confrontation, which will happen at the end here. You've got the clown abilities, which happens during the night phase, and then the dream fragments that you gain when you complete your reflection. You've also got the dark magic here set aside, as well as the reverse and the frenzy clown combat card, which is basically what the clown is going to look like. You pay, keep it face down until it tells you to flip it over. Uh, I got your die here, and these are a special die. They are custom made here, and player actions, additional stuff like your reavers and your shadows, echoes for every round, and the artifacts. All right, to begin, it's pretty simple. You're going to first take your personal reflection, and you're going to go ahead and look at it. It'll tell you where to start, so this one says to start at the hospital, so you put your character there, and then you'll read it. I don't want to spoil anything, though, but it has its own unique individual storyline, and... Um, it'll tell you where you need to go next. So it'll say your reflection will continue somewhere. Uh, we'll talk about that more later, but yeah, it's gonna have your own unique story, okay? Uh, then we're going to start the day phase of events, which is pretty simple. You're going to return, if you were originally this guy, you're gonna switch back to this guy. You're going to echo, which is you're gonna simply take one of these cards at random and draw it. You're gonna read whatever it says. This one says amnesia, and it's probably a negative effect, and it'll say discard an artifact. If you do not have an artifact, you gain a nightmare. So in this case, I'd put a nightmare on my card. Uh, this will go next to me, so it'll stay there until the next day phase. Then we're going to go on to Conviction and Nightmare. You're going to gain a Conviction and gain a Nightmare, so that's good and bad all at the same time. 
And remember, this is what's going to spawn shadows. It's nasty, and this will help you gather um, more uh, ability to make your animus stronger when you want to turn into your animus. Then you're going to go ahead and decide your action order. So if there's four players playing, decide which order each player wants to go in. Everybody gets three actions, and you're going to have a player action card right here that tells you all the different actions. The main ones, however, are to move, and moving is pretty simple. You'll move your movement speed. So you go one and two. Remember that stop signs will actually block your line of uh, movement. So if you had, if you could move four, you go one and two, but you'd have to stop there. You wouldn't be able to continue. In order to avoid that, you have to go one, two, three, and four. Uh, bad guys, when they're moving, will try to, their best to avoid this as well. Uh, attacking, you're going to attack one enemy with your combat score. This is your combat score, and it's different for your animus as well, so you'll be utilizing the score depending on what form you are in. You could also choose to reflect, which is basically if it says uh, on your card here, this one says to reflect the hospital, you could choose to use that action and in which case you'd move on to your next uh, card here and it tells you okay go back and reflect at the hospital there's the hospital you'll read it and then it'll tell you what to do next sometimes it's just simply reflecting and other times you need to do specific things uh, you could draw an artifact it's going to cost you one of your convictions you're going to be able to take an artifact from the top of the deck and this will stay in play forever this is a frost orb and it'll help you out in some way uh, you could also choose to rest. If you rest, you're going to be able to gain a conviction or take away a nightmare. You could choose to channel by spending three conviction to channel your animus at the appropriate rank. This is always a free action, so you can channel one, two, or three. And when you do that, you're going to say, okay, if I channeled one for my animus, I'd give him rank one ability. But if I did two or three, it would increase depending on uh, how much conviction I wanted to do. Also, whenever I spend conviction, I would gain nightmare. It's really, really nasty, so you have to be careful about that if you want to turn into your form it's always a good idea except for the fact that it's going to make you more likely to summon monsters you could also choose to use a location action and they'll tell you on the board what they do and where you need to go in order to do them sometimes it'll tell you to sacrifice conviction and when it does that you don't actually have to uh, put any on the nightmare track only when you spend uh, and other actions. Certain scenarios will give you certain actions. It says uh, certain artifacts, uh, animus abilities. These, these spells can sometimes require an action. It just really depends. But uh, in general, those are the main actions of the game. You take three of those. Everyone does that in turn order. And then you move on to the night phase. In the night phase, enemies will act. They get two actions. They get to move and they get to attack. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and raise the taint. It usually will tell you on your scenario where you raise the taint. In this case, it's going to be the hospital. It would be the voodoo shop and the park. As you can see, each of these spaces has five of these spots. If for some reason, at some point in time, there was five on here and it told you to raise the taint at the voodoo shop, instead of raising the taint, since there's no more spaces, you take all the way, take them all off except for one, and then you're going to spawn a shadow at its base stats, and he's ready to go. Uh, so that's that's how you're going to use one way to spawn enemies. Then you're going to go ahead and go do your nightmare test, and that's pretty simple. You'll check your nightmare, you'll take one of the die, you're going to roll the die, and depending on what you roll, we'll determine uh, whether or not you want to spawn something. For instance, if let's say I rolled a two there and I had four nightmare, I'm going to take off nightmare and create a nightmare on my space, and I'm going to also bump it based on the amount extra. So in this case, it was a one, so it'll go to a two and then a three. Just makes it more and more powerful. Uh, basically, it's health. It has damage and movement there as well. Uh, if not, if you roll higher or I believe even equal to, you're simply not going to uh, summon anything and you'll keep your nightmare there, which is a good and a bad thing because next turn you're likely to spawn something that's going to be bigger. Another thing to note too is let's say you uh, got one of these guys here, you spawned it and it had to click up five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Then you're going to have this R here. What does that mean? Well, that means that you're going to actually spawn a reaver. You're going to flip one of these guys over, and then you're going to, instead of spawning a shadow, spawn a reaver. Like I said, the tormented reaver. So if that happened on a space that my character was at, I put a character, I put the reaver down that space and follow the abilities. Some of them will utilize the dark magic, like I said previously, and uh, that is bad. These guys are really, really nasty. You want to avoid them if you possibly can. Uh, after that, you're going to go ahead and do the night phase actions, and it basically will tell you what to do in the scenario. In this specific one, I'm pretty sure that the clown ability is going to draw one of these guys here and read it. It'll say to move the killer clown to a, the nearest location without taint. 
um, and add three to take to that location. So if he, wherever he would go, he'd place this, he'd place himself there, and you would add three. So he's gonna also be spawning minions himself. So mainly Taint in this scenario is going to spawn minions as well as your Nightmare Tests. The Clown of Villas get discarded, and after you go through them all, you're gonna shuffle them all up and put them again. Um, in this scenario, you're going to be doing specific things to reduce or to uh, reduce terror on this track. And in this case, all of these spots are gonna be filled with terror. And as you do whatever it says on here, uh, you're going to be removing them. So it says every night phase, place three taint to have the killer clown's uh, event location, and then draw and resolve two clown ability cards. So while this is going on, uh, each of these different clown abilities will have a way to get rid of uh, taint, or to get rid of uh, terrors and whatnot, and you'll be removing them throughout the game. Hopefully you're doing a good job. As you move on, he'll get less and less uh, powerful until he reveals himself as the frenzied clown and he starts doing some crazy stuff. All the while, you're trying to eliminate him by destroying his terror track. And in most scenarios, or in every game, there's going to be have that scenario where you're going to be going through your reflections, trying to get to the end of it, in which case you're going to get one of these special dream fragments, which will give you an amazing, an amazing benefit throughout the game. And that's the basic idea of the game, moving around the board, going to different locations, using your reflections, attacking the enemies, so on and so forth for each of the different scenarios. And they're all different based on which scenarios. So this is just one of them that I've kind of breezed on. I didn't want to get into the story because there's so much good story here and I feel like I don't want to spoil it because there's definitely spoils for, spoilers for each reflection and a ton of different characters. But that is the basic idea of how to play the game, the shared dream, and a little bit about all of the expansions in the game. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so before I get into it, I want to talk about a couple caveats. Uh, the first thing being when you fail a nightmare test, you do subtract uh, the number that you rolled over and you're going to actually click it up just like I did previously. However, you're gonna also remove all the extra as well. So you're gonna start back at zero nightmare, which is a good thing. Also, uh, it's not ranged up here. It is actually damage, and that's presuming you do enough damage to a monster. And how do you do combat? I didn't explain that. I'll explain it really quick. You compare your combat values as well as rolling these die here. Your, your roll is gonna be blue, and their roll is going to be the red one. And if, let's say you roll the three and they roll the one, that the difference would be two. You're going to add your combat score, which would be three, so that'd be five. And then you're gonna check the monster. In this case, if it was a four, your five would hit the four because it has to be equal to or greater than, and you would take you would do your damage to it, which would be two, like I said, and that would take this guy down to two, and then you would do a one more additional for each additional tick. Uh, so uh, five and four is one, so you do an additional one, so it would take it down to one health, and it would still be alive. That's how damage works in this game. However, the bosses are different in every scenario; they are all different in their own unique way. So just be aware of that. Wanted to get those two little caveats out. Okay, so now what do I think? about the game the shared dream well first of all when you see this box it's beautiful they did an amazing job with the artwork in this game uh, all the components are really nice as well when I saw this I was overwhelmed and there is quite a bit of rules and quite a bit of understanding for each of the different scenarios it'll take you a while to set this game up so it's a thicker game right out of the box just expect a game that's gonna take a little bit of time to figure out how to play it hopefully my little instruction tutorial helped you out enough to give you a good understanding if not there's more in-depth and lengthy ones that have walkthroughs online you can check out there is a uh, Echoes, which are amazing. These things are so much fun because every turn something new and interesting is going to happen to you and it has a story in it. In fact, the story is the best aspect in this game. You're using your personal reflections. You'll have your own unique individual thing that you're doing in this game, which changes how the game plays every single time, while also having that scenario that you have to deal with fighting the clown or fighting something else. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot, okay? Uh, you've got the artifacts. These are the basically your equipment throughout the game that's going to increase your your abilities. And it's all not necessarily physical, right? It's all kind of like spiritual or like dreamlike in which you're just going and uh, you, you're... Abilities are going to be based on how you feel and how your dreams are and whether you're in your animus state or not And that's all super super cool I like the fact that it actually has standees and miniatures and you can tell the difference between what the scarier ones are And then of course what your character whether your character is in animus form or not It does feel like you're actually changing into this different type of thing Normally I'd be like all oh, miniatures But in this case I actually like the way that it functions as to how you have the standee And then all of a sudden you've now upgraded to this amazing scion who has all these special abilities and whatnot uh, the clown has his own specific different storyline as well, and each of your stories tie into how the clown is affecting the game, along with the other scenarios too. The board is a little blasé, I guess. I think that's the right word for it anyway, where it's just basically like buildings and you can move around it. I would have liked probably something a little more, I'm not interactive, but a little more... Uh, 
less city-like, basically. This feels a little, like, plain, I suppose. Uh, but the expansions have different tiles that look a lot cooler, especially the uh, Axitath one. That one has some really cool-looking stuff. There's a ton of characters in this game. There's a ton of different enemies. You're never going to play the same game more than once. This game has a lot of content and a lot of good stuff in it. All the positive I can say is, obviously, like I said before, you got the theme, you got story, which is the biggest thing in here. Uh, you've got the artwork, which is great. All the different pieces of artwork is really nice in the game. Uh, the negatives would probably be it's long, and there's a lot of rules, and you have to make sure you, th there's certain things you might forget to do, or like, oh, I wish I would have done that, or oh, Nightmare and Conviction, I gotta make sure that this is... There is a lot of steps in it. Like, you've got these three different things, and each with player actions. I mean, you're only gonna mainly move, attack, you'll reflect once in a while. Uh, drawing artifacts will happen, resting will happen, but there's mainly three that we really do use. And then, of course, the day and night phases. Once you get it down, though, it will start to flow. And after you play your first game, you're going to be able to play any other scenarios, and it'll work well, even all the expansions as well. And if you want to have that solo aspect, you're going to have to go ahead and get that Crux expansion, because it has a ton of different solo unique uh, reflections, which is really, really cool. And how they added all the expansions that can be used intertwined with this, as well as separately in their own unique scenarios. Um, the only other thing I would say about it is I, I kind of want to see uh, an ending. Like, for instance, when for our first game, which is why I talked about the clown one, when we defeated it, uh, there wasn't additional story. I wanted to have more, like, what happened? And, well, you know, what? how did we destroy him and send him back to the Nether Realm or, or whatever, right? Kind of left us with a little bit of, like, a, where is that? You know, what's, what's going on now? We just, we won, I got that, but I want more. But... I guess that's because the game gives us so much story. In general, in any other game, I probably wouldn't even care. Okay, we defeated the big dinosaur, whatever, right? But in this one, because it has such a buildup with all the different uh, stories and all different reflections, and you feel like you're part of it, I like to see even more of that. Of course, I guess that's the RPG and the designers for this game. But anyway, that's Shared Dream. If it's something you'd be interested in, you will go ahead and check it out in the description below. It'll have, I think, the new link for a new campaign coming up pretty shortly. And I'll have the previous link until the new campaign comes up, so you can check out the base game and any of the base expansions that you want to pick up. Um, I would definitely suggest taking any of the ones that you'd like there. If you want to play the solo mode variant, that's cool. Axitath is the coolest one of the bunch because it has the big huge miniature and it has all the cool like extra tiles and uh, man, I like them all. They're all really fun. This game is solid all around. If it sounds like something you're going to like, you're going to, you're going to, if it sounds like you want to get it, you should probably pick it up. If it sounds a little too much or a little too like in-depth or RPG-ish, maybe not for you. But anyway, that is the Shared Dream by Odam Publishing. Definitely go ahead and give it a check out if you enjoy these types of games for me i give it a positive review i really really enjoyed this game and i want to see more stuff that comes out of these guys because i've liked all their stuff that they made so far all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go check out those other videos you need to like subscribe and comment and all this help we do greatly appreciate it as well as check out the game the share dream in the description below uh, i think it'll be having its new stuff coming out shortly I'll, I'll, I'll keep it updated as best as i can also go check out our website unfilteredgamer.com the giveaway geek and everythingboardgames.com all right that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to transforming into my own animus with you